Welcome back everyone to our video series on fluid sim and electroneumatic circuits. In this video, I'm going to cover logic circuits in electroneumatic systems. And if you have already watched our video on pneumatic systems, we covered uh, OR and AND logic in pneumatic systems in which we discussed twin pressure valve and shuttle valve and we discussed how they function and how they provide AND and are actually or uh, functionality inside pneumatic systems. This video is going to cover the same sort of functionality, but instead of using twin pressure valve and shuttle valve, we are going to use switches and we'll see how the arrangement of switches inside electric part of electro-pneumatic circuit can help us to have or and and uh, logic functionality. Without further ado, let's focus on the component of uh, the circuits and the circuits basically we want to discuss today. So the first circuit that I have here is showing AND logic. So let me bring this pointer first. So as expected for any electroneumatic circuit, we need to have two main circuits. One of them is going to contain uh, pneumatic components and the other one is going to be based on electric component right and if we just focus on the right side in which we have the electric components we'll see we have two switches and these two switches are helping us to have the AND logic and it is actually easy to understand how it functions basically when we are dealing with AND in programming right uh, in general, we expect to have true conditions, right? And here, the same thing is happening if we consider turning on a switch as a true condition. Now, if I say if 1s1 is on, right? And, and at the same time, we are dealing with a true condition, right? But 1s2 is off, which is a false condition. And the combination of true and false when we are dealing with AND logic right the system cannot operate which means it is a false condition basically so as we expect it is and logic and we are having two switches in series here right uh, the system can operate only if both of them are in on condition so if i turn on 1s1 turn on 1s2 right the system can operate basically the current can pass as you see here can pass from 1s1 and 1s2 therefore 1m1 is going to be energized right and the system starts operating which means 1m1 is energized and the solenoid which is connected to this 1m1 right is going to shift the directional control valve and once it is shifted we would have the next action inside the pneumatic system um, if you look at basically twin pressure valve it has kind of the same functionality right the same sort of uh, uh, principle right because we have twin pressure valve and twin pressure valve has two inlets and one outlet whenever we have air from both inlets the system can basically provide the air for the outlet Right? And the same kind of thing is happening here because if 1s1 and 1s2 are in on condition at the same time, the system can operate and we would have 1m1 energized. And the other thing, if you watch the video of twin pressure valve, you can see we can use directional control valve in series, right? In order to have an logic. If like the first one is on, let's say we have uh, a 3 by 2 directional control valve and we can manually actuate it and both of them are in series if I turn on if I basically turn on the first directional control valve manually the air can pass to the second one but if it is normally closed the second one is a normally closed uh, directional control valve we need to push the manual button again in order to pass the air to the next step inside that pneumatic system so here we have kind of the same logic we have two switches kind of replacing those directional control valves in series and you would have and logic 
okay? So that is how and logic functions inside electroneumatic circuits and how we design and logic inside electroneumatic systems. So the second uh, important circuit that I'm going to show you guys is basically OR logic. And the question is how we design OR logic inside electroneumatic uh, circuits. The answer is easy. As you see, we need to put two switches in parallel and when we are putting these two switches in parallel, right? If we turn on any of these switches, the system can operate. Let's say if I turn on 1S1, as you see here, right? Current pass to 1M1. 1M1 is going to be energized. And from there, we would have the directional control valve shifted to its second position if it is connected to that solenoid, right? And if I turn on 1S2, the same thing is happening, basically. So... If you remember, and if you basically watch our video on shuttle valve and all logic in pneumatic systems. So for shuttle valve, we have two inlets, right? And if the air is passing only from one inlet, the system can pass the air to the outlet. The same kind of thing is happening here, right? Because if we have one is one and one is two, any of them in on condition, the system can pass the current to the next component within that uh, circuit and the other way of designing or logic in pneumatic systems if you watch that video you can see we can have directional control valve in parallel right and again the same thing is happening here instead of directional control valve in parallel we have two switches inside electric side of electroneumatic circuits and we are basically getting or functionality from the circuit so in the next part of this video i'm going to design these two simple circuits showing you guys how we can design or an analogic within uh, fluid sim and after that we are ready to basically design some more advanced circuits using the knowledge that we have so far based on pneumatic systems and the knowledge that we have based on uh, electronomatic circuits and uh, basically the previous video and the proximity sensors that we discussed. Okay, now let's uh, design the uh, circuits that we discussed. I'm going to design two simple circuits. The first one is going to cover AND logic and the second one is going to cover all logic. So for AND logic uh, inside electronomatic circuits, what we need is basically designing two, uh, two uh, circuits, right? For any electronomatic circuits. So I'm going to start with pneumatic side first. So for the pneumatic side, what we need is basically one actuator. I'm going to use a single acting cylinder, right? And for uh, the single acting cylinder, uh, we, we need to have for the system, basically the pneumatic side, we need to have uh, supply elements. The first thing is going to be air supply, compressed air supply. I'm going to bring air service unit uh, and I'm going to bring the manifold too, right? So this is just the, the standard form that we need to use whenever we are designing basically uh, electro-pneumatic circuits. So let's say if you are just dealing with pneumatic circuits, we need to have these components one by one. And then once we have all of them set, the, the next thing is bringing the directional control valve. And for the directional control valve, we need to bring a, uh, a configurable one, which is which has basically three ports and two positions as you see here. And then uh, I'm going to connect the ports one by one and see how the system functions at the end when we have the electric circuit ready to. So I'm going to connect these components uh, this is going to be connected here and I'm going to connect this port to the closed port which is basically a normally closed directional control valve right and then the other side is going to be connected to the actuator to the single acting cylinder and we need to bring a terminator here basically add a terminator here as an exhaust and uh, uh, double click on this we we need to configure it right so what we need to have here is basically uh, for for one side i'm going to put a spring return 
and for the other side as I'm going to put uh, electric actuation and we, we can also add a sort of manual override that is what I'm doing here just man having a manual override in, in the case that if let's say we don't have electrical power right how the system can function this manual override help us in order to have the system uh, function for that specific case now uh, I'm going to hit okay we, we, we can start labeling too I'm going to label it as 1v1 right and this is going to be called as uh, 1a which is the actuator right and uh, this is going to be called 0z which is the air service unit and this one is going to be called 1z now we are done with uh, the pneumatic side and the next step is to focus on electric side for electric side we need to go to electrical control uh, basically part and then we we need to go to the power supply right and i'm going to choose 24 and 0 volt right and then we can extend it a bit just extending it a bit and the same thing for this side extending it a bit and then as you might remember based on the first part of the video we need to have two switches so for switches we can go inside switches and we can go to manual switches right and what we can do we can either choose push button or detent switch i'm going to use detent switch because when we use detent switch it can hold its position right so it is better to have it because we want to experience uh, and basically experiment uh, and logic here right so we need to have a sort of switch that can hold the position that is applied to, to it right so this is the first one this is the second one now we have both ready we, i'm going to connect it to the 24 volt side and then the next thing is uh okay we have uh, switches here but we need to have a solenoid right which is basically fusing our uh, electric circuit to uh, pneumatic circuit right and for that we can go to relay and I'm going to bring the uh, the valve solenoid here right and then connect it to the to this side right now we have every single connection needed so what I'm going to do is just putting this one as S1. Hit OK. The second one as S2. And hit OK. And the third one here, which is basically the solenoid, I'm going to call it 1M1. Right? We have 1M1. And now it's time to do that uh like to to combine these two right the electric circuit and the pneumatic circuit so we just need to click on this one and choose one and one and hit ok now the system is ready and if we start the simulation we can see how the system functions so i start the simulation here right you see as expected for the pneumatic side the air is passing through this air service unit through this manifold and here it is blocked because it is normally closed directional control valve but it can be actuated manually or with the solenoid basically electrically and in this side we have two switches and we have the current right 20 volt 24 volt and the other side 0 volt the difference of potential therefore we would have the the current right because of this uh, difference of potential now if i turn on this switch because it's a detent switch it holds its position current will pass but s2 is still open current cannot pass to, to this one and one therefore we won't have any sort of actuation in the pneumatic side now if i turn on this one you see the current is passing one and one is energized this is shifted to the second position right and because it is shifted to the second position it shifted to the open position of directional control valve air is pathing here right and what we have at the end is the system is in fully advanced position
now if i turn up any of these switches let's say if i turn up this one the system return back immediately to its initial position because we have a sort of a spring return and we won't have any sort of connection here right this is not energized anymore therefore this is not going to be in the second position the spring return uh, returns the directional control valve to its initial position therefore the actuator will return to its initial position which is fully retracted position so that is how and logic functions we need to have both switches in on condition in order to have the system operating now let's look at or logic and see how or logic function so what we designed here instead of having two of them in series instead we just need to have them in parallel so what i'm going to do is bringing these two switches in parallel so the same thing just copy pasting this right putting this here and it's going to be called s2 right and this is going to be connected and we would have this one connected here too right so now we have two switches in parallel as you see here right and the assumption is if i turn on s1 or s2 the system should start operating right because it is or logic so if i turn on this simulation and you see at the beginning the current cannot pass because both of them in uh, are in off condition right and if i turn on this current will pass one and one is energized it is in the like uh fully advanced position the actuator right now if i turn on like let's say i'm turning off this one system returns back to its initial position i'm turning on this one the same thing is happening right basically if we have any of them in on condition the system is going to operate so that is how or logic functions so if you want to learn about twin pressure valve and shuttle valve you can watch our videos related to these two components and see how twin pressure valve and shuttle valves functions inside pneumatic circuits but when we are dealing with electro pneumatic systems we don't need those components we just need two switches and those two switches can help us to have the functionality of or logic and the functionality of and logic thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoyed please subscribe our channel